Hi, this is Michael Bofer, and let's get ready for Baylorick TV. How you doing? Okay, so talk to us about the fight, the, obviously the post fight with uh, Dillian White. How do you think the fight went for yourself? <laughs> obviously, it never went how I wanted to go because I never got the decision, but the fact is, um, it was a good fight. The fans enjoyed it, I suppose, and everyone knows that. I've been hearing good feedback from everyone since I've been through this fight, but obviously, I wanted to win, but it just so happened that I broke my nose and it weren't to be. Do you know, the amount of people said to me, you know, that illusion, he's got skill, he's got talent. Mm. A lot of people before the fight didn't know who you were, mm -hmm. and after the fight, people said, boy, Lewis could have done so much, you could have done this, you could have yeah. done that. Talk to us about. Like, what was going through your mind through the fight? Was it, we, in terms of shape and condition, were you in the best condition you could be for the fight? Or? No, but it's apparent, of course not, because I've had different fights and I've come in in better shape. So mm -hmm. I've come into this one with a few injuries, but I'm not making no excuses for it. Mm -hmm. The fact is, I went in there in the condition I was in. Obviously, now looking back, I should not have done so, but I went in there in the shape and made no excuses. He won on the night. But do you think now, if you got yourself in a better shape for a fight in the future, potentially people might underestimate you, and that could be an opportunity for you to get no, but bigger fights. No, that's the plan. Get in better shape and then go and do it again. But obviously, for this one, I weren't in the best shape, and I never had the longest time to get in some sort of shape. So mm -hmm. But do you think that was just a, that was the plan anyway to not yeah, get you in your best shape? Of course, that's why they've done it. And why, that's why they've done it, and their plan worked for them. Yeah. In terms of Dylan White, you've known him for years now. I mean. Mm -hmm. Was he as good as you thought he was in there, or better, or worse, or what was the situation with that inside the ring? Yeah, the only situation was he caught me with a good shot, hit me and broke my nose, and that's what saved him on the night. Because at the end there, if it didn't, I would have fucked him up. That's how you felt, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Is it something that you would look to have again in the future, like a rematch? 100%, definitely. In a rematch, I'll knock him out, and that's plain straight truth for it. So I came close to doing it with a bad leg and with all the injuries I had on the night, and with a broken nose. But you know what, without all these injuries, next time out, I'll put him on his back. Okay, so is there now, there is build up and there's hype and stuff for a fight. Was that needle real or was that just to sell tickets? Uh, the guy's a warrior, whichever way you want to put it about it. Yeah. I don't care, the guy is a, he's a plain straight jackass. <laughs> and that's just him, isn't it? And that's how he sells and he does what he does and he says what he says. But he just says things that which are disrespectful uh, and it's going to get you a bit heated or a bit tempered. And that's just him. But you know what? He is what he is. Did that. Mind games and that stuff, did that get to you or make you more fired up than you should have been or motivate you more or was it just. No, but if you look at it, like he was playing the games he was playing, but psychologically I had the edge of him where he tried to come in there with his mind frame, but I feel I'd done better than him and I got in his head more than he got in mine. Punching power? Is he a big puncher? Oh, he is. Yeah, listen, my son is, well. Dude, you saw it clear, man. I gave this guy so many fucking shots, he couldn't hit me. He never once hurt me, he never had me in any problems throughout the fight. Fucking, I swear to God, my mum hit harder. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. So, the future? I just recover and get in and do it again. So, I mean, in terms of when you're going to be, next be out? Probably December, January sort of time. Okay, and the lessons learned in terms of taking fights like this? I mean, mm -hmm. I hear a lot around the British scene. You've got to take this fight, and if you don't take this fight now, then you're done. You're not going to get another opportunity. Was that, the, was that the scenario you were kind of forced into, or was that your own... No, do you know what? I ain't making no excuses for anything. The fact of the matter was, every decision you make is one you make, because at the end of it, there's always a different outcome to the decision. It's for you to choose which avenue of decision you make. Mm -hmm. And I made this decision consciously, so therefore, regardless of whether that was the situation or it wasn't the situation, I consciously made decisions to take the fight. So fault is mine. I didn't go into 100%. So that's where my lessons learned. Regardless of what may be the threats next time around or whatever, whatever, I just won't do that again. So. Is it a step up for you now, or a few more warm-up fights? How's it going to work with you now, your career? Yeah, I'm not this guy that get fights. I don't give a shit who's in there, Tatry. If I'll be up wherever I'm going to, I'll fight whoever. Ian Lewis, it's great to see you again. You take care, champ. Thank you. Cheers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's Ingrid Jones from Valoric TV. We're out. Take care.